In this video, we're going to take a look at the uh, post-process effects available in Octane for Cinema 4D. And for this video, I'm using the Limo 01.C4D scene. This uh, scene already actually has post-processing applied. You can see from this little lens flare right here. So let's, I'm going to select the camera. We have a Octane camera tag associated with it. Let's make sure that we're actually looking through it. Yeah, so that's camera one. So I'm going to select this camera tag and just delete it. So that you can see the lens flare goes away. And uh, let's set the uh, daylight here. And I'm going to adjust the north offset just so we can change the lighting a little bit. So maybe do something like this, just so we can see some lighting on the surface of our characters here. And uh, then what I'll do is I'm going to select my camera and go to the tags and choose C4D Octane Tag, Octane Camera Tag. I'm going to go into the Camera Imager, Enable Camera Imager, and just pull down Hot Pixel Removal just so we can eliminate some of the fireflies we've seen here. And then let's go to Post Processing, and I'm going to choose Enable. So we can see the effects that are available in post processing. So we have bloom power, which is going to add an overall bloom to the image. You can see that the post process effects are actually applied while the image is still rendering, which is kind of nice. So adjusting these does not force Octane to start recalculating. So you can kind of play with them while you're rendering. So obviously this is kind of insane. So we can bring it down a little bit, maybe just put a little bloom on there. We have a glare power, which allows us to add these wonderful lens flares here. So you can kind of adjust bloom power and glare power, you know, together to kind of create an interesting look while you're rendering. So let's make it a little bit less than subtle here, just so we can see the other settings. So we have glare amount, so I can increase this and you can see more of the flares coming off of each of the stars there. I always like to set this to actually to one and adjust the glare angle. I kind of look, think that looks a little bit more sci-fi, um, but that's an opinion of course. But you can see with the glare rotate, we can actually, or the glare angle rather, we can rotate this around. So you'd have horizontal, vertical, and then of course increase the glare amount and rotate these around. It's a lot of fun. Um, then we have, a, we can obviously blur it so it's not so sharp. And finally, spectral intensity allows us to add a little bit of a spectral or a spectrum color shift to the uh, post-process effects. So you can see if I increase the spectral intensity and then adjust the shift, then we can adjust the actual colors that we see. So uh, obviously I'm not exhibiting a whole lot of taste here, but it is making it as obvious as possible. The last thing I want to point out is you can render these separately as a separate pass. I'm going to bring down the bloom power so it's more sharper on these flares here, on this glare. And let's go into render, uh, render settings, edit render settings, and set this to select octane render and go to render passes and I'm going to choose enable and then go down here to beauty pass and turn on post. And I do that, we can actually select the post down here. So you can see how this would be rendering out as a separate layer, which you could then composite on top of your image so that you can adjust the strength of it separately in like After Effects or Nuke or something like that. Turn this back off, we can see here it is in our render view.